Okay, so we're going to look at the different types of bonds that occur. Uh, specifically, we're going to be focusing on covalent and ionic bonds, which is what you primarily run into at this level chemistry. So I started off with asking the students, what are some observations you've made in your lab? And one of the things was I had you look at the compounds that started with carbon. If they start with carbon, they're going to be covalent. And so one of the things you'll see is that you have lower, I'm going to abbreviate melting points. Ionics, a uh, prime example would be copper sulfate. You were unable to melt it. Um, these generally will dissolve in water. They'll conduct electricity. Um, they have high melting points, high boiling points. So that's the main differences you'll see in lab at this stage. So types of chemical bonds. You had hydrogen bonds and hydrogen bonds Y'all talked about in biology, and we're not going to focus on that too much, but the hydrogen bond, one of the things y'all talked about, was it held the DNA structure together. Metallic bonds, just like its name says, it's a bond between metals. Uh, it's also a bond we're not going to be focusing on. So then we get to covalent and ionic bonds. So I want you to think about, when you think of the word covalent, I want you to think of shares electrons. And when you think about ionic bonds, I want you to think of uh, give and take. And cations and anons. Now, hopefully you notice that underneath covalent bonds, we have two types, polar covalent bonds and non-polar covalent bonds. Both of these you've interacted with in your world. One of the top examples of a polar covalent bond is H2O, water. A non-polar covalent bond would be like oil. So why is water a polar covalent? What well, has really important properties? So let's look at the structure. So I'm going to draw a red circle. And this is oxygen. Okay. And then since it's H2O, Let's draw two circles, and that represents hydrogen. Now, let's look at the valence electrons of hydrogen. Hydrogen has one valence electron, so I'm going to put a dot, and I'm going to put a dot here. Now, oxygen has six valence electrons. Now, I already know what this looks like, and I'm gonna help guide you through what it actually ends up forming like. So, we're gonna have two paired here, and one here, and one here. And in between this red and blue dot, we end up with a bond. Okay, so our water molecule looks like Mickey Mouse. And the cool thing is, is that this right here between those two points, so if I look at the angle between these, it's about 105 degrees, which is kind of unique because not all the, all the molecules that are what we call a bent structure have this. Now, why is this polar covalent? So, pole is referring to pole, 
poles, like a magnetic pole, a north and a south, okay? We're going to have poles as well, but these poles will be positive and negative charge. And remember, I talked about that oxygen is, uh, it's electronegative. And so, since I got these electrons over here, we end up with a negative charge on this side here. And if I have a negative charge on one side, that means over here with hydrogen, I have a positive charge. My poles, positive and negative. And because of that, it can dissolve substances like ionic compounds that also have a positive and a negative charge, which you'll see shortly. Okay, whew, that was a lot. Your definition of a covalent bond is gonna be a non-metal, non-metal, or a metalloid and a non-metal. An ionic bond is gonna be at this level, at this point in time, a metal and a non-metal. So the simplest way to know which type of bond you have is to look at the first element and ask yourself, is it a metal or a non-metal? If it's a metal, it's ionic. If it's a non-metal or a metalloid, then it's covalent. Properties of compounds. So in your lab, I wanted you to come up with some properties before you walked in on Tuesday to work. And this was some of the ideas you should have come across. Soluble in water is a primary one. Ionics will dissolve in water. Molecular or covalent substances will not. Um, these ionic will conduct electricity in water. Molecular covalents will not. These are made up of one metal and one non-metal. These have low melting points and boiling points. Covalent bonds. So these share electrons and carbon is a leader in this. Now, because they can share electrons, covalent bonds are known for having what we call double and triple bonds. And you'll see those shortly. Okay. Carbon is a leader in this. Uh, so if you see carbon, you've got a covalent bond. We will use prefixes when naming. That's why we have this chart here. And if you're not familiar with your prefixes, here it is available to you. I'm going to start you off with binary compounds first. And so with binary, we always add an IDE ending to the end of the name. Now, guys, you've been doing this for years. You just didn't know what the rules were. So, for instance, CO2, you know it as carbon dioxide, and CO, carbon monoxide. So, you've already been doing this, so don't overthink this. You've totally got this. So, in the warm-up exercise, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking, the first thing is, is we're going to do a Lewis dot for each element. And this is just to help us visualize what we're doing. So hydrogen has one advanced electron, oxygen has six. Okay, so when I put them together, I get O, and I'm doing this pretty fast because we've already done this one. And now what about the name? So I'm going to name the prefix that two. That's di. Then I name the element hydrogen. Now I have to have a prefix. So since I have only one oxygen, I'm going to say mon mono. And now I need to name the oxygen. So, oxide. 
So we have H2O, dihydrogen monoxide. Okay. Let's look at this one. This one you've worked with in lab. Um, let's again start off with our, our dots first. So I have hydrogen, which has one dot. And chlorine, if you check your periodic table, has seven dots. So a pretty dot. Okay. So here comes hydrogen with this one dot. Here comes chlorine. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we're going to make a bond. Now, how do I name this? So again, we're going to name the first one, which is hydrogen. And then with a prefix, since we only have one, mono, and then chloride. Now, wait a minute. We've used this in lab. That's not the name that we know this to be as. You're right. It's not. So we learned in the spring, actually, that this is hydrochloric acid. And we know from lab that hydrochloric acid, <clears throat> it does dissolve ionic substances because we've already been messing with it. Well, look at chlorine. Chlorine's over here is a big electron grabber. And so, of course, just like we saw with water, we get a negative side over here. And we get a positive side over here. So it is polar covalent, which is why it's able to dissolve like it does. Okay. So here is carbon dioxide. I want you to notice that we've had to move some electrons around. Your electrons can move. They're going to move. They're going to want to move. They're going to want to make bonds. So don't think that they're fixed in these locations that we drew for the lowest dot. They're going to move. So you notice I end up with double bonds between the carbon and the oxygen. This is carbon dioxide. Here's carbon, carbon monoxide. And notice it has triple bonds. So again, it's going to move and make the bonds it needs to. Here's NH3, which is nitrogen trihydride. We know it as a different name. And here's carbon tetrachloride. What? Nitrogen? Uh, what do you mean, N2? Surprise! There are seven diatomics on the periodic table. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And you need to mark those up. So, mark your periodic tables. There are seven of these. They're very special. They don't ever occur by themselves, so they're going to be N2, H2, O2, F2, Cl2, Br2, and I2. And it's going to be important when we balance equations. Okay, there's some more practice. Keep practicing and get better every day. Live long and prosper.